Good day everyone, especially to our professor, Ginoong Wenceslao. I am Nika Joy Biliarta, together with Ms. Pedida and Ms. Agipo, and we will discuss the agrarian reform in the Philippines. Before we discuss the agrarian reform, let's discuss first the land reform. Noon, ang pinaglalaban lamang ng ating mga magsasaka ay reforma sa lupa o ang land reform. Ito ay tumutukoy sa mga hakbang na isinasagawa ng pamalaan upang ipamahagi ng pantay-pantay ang lupa sa isang bansa. Ito ay layunin na wakasan ang pang-aabuso at hindi patas na pamamahagi ng lupa at magbigay ng lupa sa mga magsasaka na walang sariling lupa o kulang ang lupa. Sa pamamagitan ng land reform, naglalayon ang pamalaan Pamahalaan na maibagay sa mga magsasaka ang legal na pag-aari at kontrol sa lupa ng kanilang sinasaka. Sa kabilang banda naman, ang agrarian reform ay mas pinalawak na konsepto na sumasaklaw hindi lamang sa pamamahagi ng lupa, kundi pati na rin sa iba't ibang aspekto ng agrikultura at kaunlaran sa kanayunan. Ito ay naglalayon na maibigay sa mga magsasaka at mga manggagawa sa agrikultura ang mga serbisyong sosyal, edukasyon, kaalaman sa teknolohiya, pautang at iba pang suporta na makakatulong sa kanila na mapaundad ang kanilang hanap buhay. Ang agrarian reform ay nagsisilbe bilang isang malawakang programa na sumusuporta sa mga magsasaka at kanilang mga komunidad upang mapalakas ang sektor ng agrikultura at makamit ang tunay na kaunlaran. What is DAR or ang Department of Agrarian Reform? Ito ay isang ahensya ng pamahalaan sa Pilipinas na may pangunahing layunin na magpatupad ng reformang agraryo. Bilang bahagi ng reformang agraryo, ang DAR ay may kapangyarihan na magpamahagi ng mga lupang sakahan mula sa mga malalaking lupain at ipamahagi ito sa mga magsasaka. Ginagawa ito upang mapalawak ang pagmamayari ng mga magsasaka sa lupa at mapalakas ang kanilang kita at kabuhayan. Ngunit sa kasalukuyan, maraming mga magsasaka ang patuloy na naghihirap sa Pilipinas. Ang naisin ng gobyerno o ng pamahalaan na maitaguyod ang pamumuhay ng magsasaka ay hindi natutupad o nabibigyan ng hustisya. Meron nga tayong agrarian reform, ngunit hindi talaga tuluyang nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa pamumuhay ng ating mga kapwa Pilipinong magsasaka. Until now, ang ating mga farmers ay hindi pa rin nabibigyan ng justice. It's sad to say na kung sino pa ang umani ng pawis at dugo sa lupa, sila pa ang patuloy na nagdurusa. Matagal na panahon na nagdurusa ang ating mga magsasaka. Agrarian reform is a 100-year history of unfinished reforms after the United States took over the country from the Spaniards. Bago pa dumating ang mga Kastila, ang lupa ay karaniwang sinasaka ng mga tao para sa kanilang sariling pangangailangan. That time, there were no owner cultivators. Ang lupa ay para sa lahat. Mayroon lamang mga pamayanan ng lupa na pag-aari ng barangay na binubuo ng dato. Mga malayang mamayan, mga aliping sa gigilid, at mga aliping na mamahay. During Spanish period, Merong tinatawag na ekomienda na tumutukoy sa mga royal land grants. Sa pamamagitan nito, ibinibigay ang kontrol at mga benepisyo ng lupa sa mga ekomenderos o mga taong itinalaga ng hari. Ang sistema ito ay nagre-resulta sa pag-aari at pangangasiwa ng malalaking lupain at populasyon ng mga Pilipino. Kasunod nito, ipinatupad ang Maura Dikri na nagtakda ng isang taong panahon para makuha ang titulo ng lupa. Layunin nito na pabilisin ang proseso ng pag-aari ng lupa at maipamahagi ito sa mga tao. Sa pamamagitan ng batas na ito, inaasahang mabibigyan ng pagkakataon ng mga Pilipino na magkaroon ng sariling lupain at pag-aari. Ngunit, isang malaking hamon ang hindi pagkilala ng mga kastila sa mga lokal na kaugalian at kultura ng mga Pilipino. Sa halip, ipinatanggi nila ang mga ito at ipinilit ang kanilang sariling sistema at paniniwala. Ito ay nagdulot ng di pagkakunawaan at hindi pagkakasundo sa pagitan ng mga Kastila at mga Pilipino. Isa pa sa mga halagang pangyayari during Spanish period ay ang pagtatag ng mga pueblos o mga komunidad na itinatag ng mga Kastila. 
Sa pamamagitan nito, ipinatupad nila ang kanilang batas at namuno sa mga tao sa mga nasasakupang lugar. Ang pagtatag ng mga pueblos ay bahagi ng kanilang layunin palaganapin. Palaganapin ang kristyanismo at ang kanilang sistema ng pamamahala. Ang mortgage naman o ang pagsasangla ay isang sistema kung saan ang mga tao ay nagpapahiram ng pera sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng kanilang mga lupa bilang garantya. Ito ay naging isang pangunahing paraan ng pagsasakripisyo ng mga Pilipino para sa pangangailangan nila sa pera. Sa ilalim ng sistema ng mortgage, maaring mawala sa kanila ang kanilang lupain kapag hindi nila ito kayang bayaran. Sa huli, isa pang patakaran na nagdulot ng pagsasakripisyo at suliranin sa mga Pilipino ay ang inquilinos or friar stocks. Ito ay isang buwis na ipinataw ng mga prayle sa mga Pilipinong magsasaka bilang kabayaran sa paggamit ng lupa at iba pang serbisyong inaalok ng simbahan. Ang itwilinos ay nagdulot ng pabigat na pasanin sa mga magsasaka at nagresulta sa patuloy na kahirapan at kawalan ng kalayaan sa lupain. The American Period Long Live America was the reign of the United States in the Philippines that lasted for 48 years after the Spanish colonial period. Typically, the goals of land reforms are the abolition of feudalism and the overthrow of the landlord class. The Americans are motivated by this goal to enact a variety of land laws that will help a large number of Filipino tenants and farmers. Philippine Bill of 1902 According to the law, a private individual may own up to 16 hectares of land, whereas a corporation may only hold up to 1,024 hectares. Additionally, the Act grants Americans the ability to buy agricultural land in the nation. Land Registration Act of 1902 all public and private land is now subject to the torrent system. The Americans came up with the torrent system as a method to end disputes over the legality, ownership, and title to land. A state-maintained record of land holdings serves as the foundation for the system of land registration and transfer. Public Land Act of 1903, also known as Act 926, it is the country's first public land act that was put into effect in 1903 after being observed throughout the entire archipelago. Following then, it became the foundation for the disposition of public lands. It established a system of homesteading, free patenting, selling, and leasing public lands appropriate for agricultural purposes. In order to improve agricultural output from previously empty regions and to alleviate agrarian issues in densely populated areas of the Tenancy Act of 1933. The law applies to both rice and sugarcane lands. The purpose of this law is to encourage and improve tenant landlord relationships. Additionally, it makes a 50 50 crop sharing agreement. It also provides tenants with protection against the landlord's arbitrary eviction and abuses. Land planted with sugarcane and tenant farmers must also have tenancy agreements. Commonwealth period, a government for the Filipinos was a government led by Manuel L. Quezon. Due to the continuous rise of agrarian problems, President Quezon supports the social justice program to arrest the increasing social unrest in central Luzon. The 1935 Constitution through a national plebiscite, an impressive majority of Filipinos ratified the Philippine Constitution. As a response to the issues with land ownership and tenancy, the Constitution included explicit measures on social justice and expropriation of land estates for distribution to tenants. Commonwealth Act No. 178 This law was passed in an effort to improve the lives of tenant farmers and farmers who specialize in the growing of rice, as well as to foster positive relationship between landlords and tenants. National Rice and Corn Corporation, also known as NARIC, it was founded in 1936. This legislation aims to raise the standard of rice and corn while maintaining an affordable and steady price for the general public to consume. Additionally, it safeguards the social and financial circumstances of the farmers who grow corn and rice. Commonwealth Act No. 461 the act was passed as a result of the difficulties that were raised by landlords who dismissed their tenants without cause. 
It is a method of regulating these landlords who have the power to evict tenants for no just cause or only as a matter of whim. The Act release outlined the grounds that landlords could use to evict their tenants and only with the Tenancy Division of the Department of Justice consent can this happen. Rural Program Administration or also known as Executive Order Number no. 191 issued in 1939 had its goal of promoting small-scale land ownership, raising the standard of living for rural residents, and improving their general welfare. It comprises leasing to renters as well as purchasing and renting haciendas. The Japanese occupation. Imperial Japan controlled the Commonwealth of the Philippines from 1942 to 1945 during the World War II. The invasion of the Philippines began on December 8, 1941, 10 hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Peasants and workers' organizations became more powerful when the Japanese invaded the Philippines in 1942. Many peasants took up arms and joined the Hukbalahap or Hukbong Bayang laban sa mga hapon. It is an anti-Japanese organization. Hukbalahap ruled over large portion of central Luzon. Landlords who sided with the Japanese had their estates taken over by peasants, while those who sided with the Hooks or Hukbalahap members received fixed rents in their favor. The chance to promote pro policies was tremendous. Sadly, with the aid of military police and civilian guards, landlords were able to reclaim their estates at the end of the war. Philippine Republic The rise of the new republic, the issues with land tenure persisted after the declaration of Philippine independence in 1946. This grew worse in some locations. As a result, the Philippine Congress updated the tenancy legislation. President Manuel Rojas, 1946-1948 the Republic Act No. 34. In order to establish a 70-30 split between tenant and landlord, Republic Act No. 34 was passed. The person who covered the cost of planting, harvesting, and labor animals will receive 70% of the produce. Additionally, it lowered the interest rate on loans from landowners to tenants to a maximum of 6%. Republic Act No. 55. There are still landlords who evict their tenants without a good reason. Therefore, the Republic Act No. 55, a complete and improved safeguard against the arbitrary eviction of renters, was consequently passed. President Ramon Magsaysay, 1954-1957 Republic Act No. 1199 It is to establish agricultural tenancy relationship between landowners and tenants on the basis of social justice. Not only to protect one party but to protect both tenants and landers, landowners' rights. It is also to ensure an equitable distribution of the land's produce and income, as well as to give tenant farmers incentives to increase and improve their agricultural production. Republic Act No. 1400 also known as Land to Landless Program. By opening up public agricultural lands and dividing and distributing privately owned agricultural lands where agrarian complex exists, either through private agreements with the owner or through expropriation proceedings, the government shall establish and distribute as many family-sized farms to as many landless citizens as possible. President Gisdado Macapagal, 1961-1965 Republic Act No. 3844, the Agricultural Land Reform Code. This law ended shared tenancy and established an effort to turn tenant farmers into tenants and eventually owner cultivators. It attempted to release tenant from the bonds of tenancy and give hope to underprivileged farmers to own the land they are farming. Additionally, it emphasizes equity, increased production, farmer independence, owner cultivatorship, and the public distribution of land. President Ferdinand Marcos, 1965-1986 Presidential Decree No. 27 The maximum size of a land holding was lowered to 7 hectares and tenanted lands used for growing rice and corns were made available to the tenants. According to the law, Share tenants who work on a land holding of 7 hectares or more might buy the land they farm, while those on less land could opt to become leaseholders. Tenant Emancipation Act It aims to free all tenant farmers, whether or not they were employed on landed estates, 
who were engaged in the cultivation of corn and rice on a private grounds. Sharecropping or lease tenancy was used to establish the system. For the first time, tenants were given the option to purchase the land they could debate, provided they joined the farmers' cooperatives. Republic Act No. 6390, also known as the Agrarian Reform Special Fund Act. It is an act to create an Agrarian Reform Special Account in the General Fund, provide the funds required for it, and for other objectives in order to accelerate the execution of the Agrarian Reform programs. Through a system of production, processing, marketing, distribution, credit, and services. The Act also intends to raise agricultural productivity and farm incomes. President Corazon C. Aquino, 1986 to 1992. Executive Order Number 228. By means of this Act, eligible former beneficiaries covered by Presidential Decree Number 27 were declared to have full ownership of the land. Additionally, it established the worth of surviving fields of corn and rice for the purpose of coverage that was given for how beneficiaries who were farmers would pay and how landowners would be compensated. Executive Order Number 229, also known as the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program or CARF, this law established the administrative procedures for land registration programs, the purchase of private lands, and the payment of compensation to proprietors. The organization and duties of the entities responsible for coordinating and monitoring the program's implementation were described. Republic Act No. 6657, also known as the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law, or CARL, an act establishing a thorough agrarian reform program to advance industrialization and social justice, establishing the framework for its ex execution and for other purposes. The lands that were once used for agricultural purposes but were abandoned are included in the definition of agricultural land as a result of this measure. Issues of agrarian reform in the Philippines Number 1. The loss of passion Due in part to underpayment and underappreciation of farmers, young Filipinos are becoming less and less interested in careers in agriculture. Filipino farmers are 57 to 59 years old on average, which raises questions about who will do the crucial role of farming in the future. Families have traditionally taken the lead when it comes to the employment choices available to young people. And the sad reality is that the majority of parents themselves are unwilling to allow their children to choose farming as a vocation. Since we live in a modern technological society, it is evident that many farmers who are transitioning to other careers advise their kids to pick urban-based occupation. No parents want their children to become an agriculturist rather than to be in a white-collar job. They have been pressured and conditioned from an early age to pursue careers as doctors, engineers, or other stable occupations. Second is, the price of rice has dropped and farmers had gone bankrupt. Low palay prices could indicate that farmers with higher yields are forced to sell their produce fresh despite the low price due to a lack of post-harvest facilities and or drying pavements. Additionally, farmers may find it challenging to turn a profit and food inflation may result which might be bad for both farmers and consumers. And last, farmers are still hungry after 30 years in agrarian reform. Farmer as Secretary of Agrarian Reform, Jan Castrichones, for assistance in living and just contract with tycoons. Jamora claimed that the farmers suffered as a result of the agreement because they were only given 10,000 pesos per year or 833 pesos per month in profit sharing payments. It merely demonstrates how unfair their actions were for other farmers. Additionally, it demonstrates how the farmers' lives were endangered despite the fact that the promise they made to them was not kept. It has resulted in the significant fragmentation of agricultural fields, ultimately disempowering farmers who lack the resources to support their own production while battling to fulfill their commitments in order to obtain land titles. Why are Filipino farmers still poor despite having agrarian reforms? First, landlessness or rich control. Chairperson of Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas, Rafael Mariano, claims, one of the obvious effects of landlessness for centuries has been the terrible state of farming and fishing in the Philippines. Millions of hectares of land planted with staples, 
grain, and food crop as well as indigenous lands and public lands were grabbed and converted into plantation, extractive mining projects, and farm depoted to export crash, cash crops. These deals and acquisition land grabs were led by corporation disenfranchising and displacing farmers from the land they till. In addition, he claimed that profits and additional revenue continue to flow in the hands of a select few while the majority of the peasants and their families experience worsening landlessness and land grabs due to a deteriorating glob global food and economic crisis. Farmers who claim and land rise after that, he claimed that they are under threat from nearby landlords, large businesses, and even the government, highlighting the regular occurrence of violence against farmers and fishermen. Mariano, who once served as the Secretary of Agrarian Reform, also mentioned that earlier, his team has observed how business are taking over and more and more of the agriculture and food industries. And last one, government neglect. The main cause of poverty among agricultural workers is the underinvestment in the sector, which is one of the biggest mistakes a rising nation like the Philippines might make. There have been corrupt practices, poor policies, and program and an over-reliance on imports. Despite making up 11% of the GDP, the government only invests about 4% of the total budget in the industry. Additionally, only around 1% of the overall national budget is typically allocated to research and development, which is a very low expenditure. This is far less than the 3% of GDP R&D budget that is the advice for undeveloped nations. With such pitiful support, the Philippines fall behind its neighbors in terms of R&D funding. Another issue is the government's inclination toward boosting production without giving much thought to the welfare of farmers and their families. This persistent issue demonstrates that the agricultural sector's dilemma is primarily structural and political. Habita and Briones attributed the agricultural sector's poor performance to deficiencies in the institutional and policy framework in which it operates and not much to weaknesses in the production sector itself. The lack of adequate policy support for farmers was exacerbated by problems with low levels of technology adoption. Comparatively, modest-scale economies, massive debt, and landlessness, in reality, agricultural laborers bore a disproportionate share of the societal costs associated with the program flaws and failures.